Christ Jesus has triumphed o'er Satan and death, and now praise his name, I am free. Although he has gone to his Father's right hand, may Greetings, friends. This is Pastor R. Norheim presenting the Gospel in Sermon and Song sponsored by the Lutheran Gospel Out Association, Pasadena, California. Released on a special network of selected radio stations in the United States, Canada, and overseas. Maintained by the prayerful, free will, tax deductible gifts of listeners. School friends this month part after enjoying friendships for months or years some to never meet again. But blessed are we who have the friend of friends to be near us for time and eternity, and his friends shall at last join the heavenly, everlasting family. that sticketh closer than a brother, the best of all our friends, who went all the way to Calvary's cross to redeem us and make us thine own. We bow in thy presence today, thanking thee for the many friends that was given us in this world, and that we might be preparing for continuation in eternity. For those that have strayed away, grant they may come back to the fold. And those who have never known thee might today come to say, I need such a friend for such a time as this. We ask it in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the shadow of the cross is the song the Seattle Rock of Ages praise singers sing for us. Jesus' saving power shall be my one seed eternal. 
For this beautiful month, when gardens come aglow with flowers, we've chosen a garden song Haldor Lillinus wrote, The Garden of My Heart. If you don't have this number, we'll be happy to send you a copy so you can sing along with us words and music. Ask for the song of the month, The Garden of My Heart, and address your letter to Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 1, 2, Pasadena, California. In Canada, write to Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. beautiful. God made them. It would be a colorless world without them, wouldn't it? But we can't eat flowers. So God made vegetables, fruit, yes, meat and potatoes too, and they cost money, do we know? There's something beautiful about the gospel in sermon and song too, but it also costs a lot to produce and release the radio programs that bring food for the soul into your home. You never receive a bill to be paid within 30 days or so, but the Holy Spirit knows who to remind to help cover the costs. And we know, because down through these many years we've seen your letters come to our office with free will gifts enclosed. It seems that all you need to know is the mailing address, and the Lord has taken care of this too, as we have an address that's among the easiest to remember. Post Office Box 1-2, Lutheran Gospel Hour, Pasadena, California. And in Canada, likewise, Post Office Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. When you send, or when we send you your receipt, we also enclose our return envelope, including the zip code number. But to simplify things, we don't insist that you use the zip code number when you don't have our return envelopes. So it's Box 1-2, Pasadena, California, here in the States. Very simple. In Canada, however, it's required that we give you the zip code number, so it's Lutheran Gospel Hour, Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, S7K3K4. Before Associate Speaker Wilmar Gunderson brings today's message, he sings, He Touched Me.
Gunderson, I'd like to share with you today on the ABCs of parenthood. I'm drawing my thoughts from a paper called Pulpit Helps. There is no author given, but it basically goes through the alphabet, and I'd like to add some comments to the thoughts that I've received from this little rough outline. It starts out this way, A. Always trust your children to God's care. You know, I think that's something we do in bringing our children to the Lord and asking Him to touch their lives and deal in their lives. For example, in, in baptism and, and sharing the Word with them on a daily basis at home. This is so important. B, to bring them to Bible, school, and worship service. Many parents, they say, hey, look, I'm going to drive you to Sunday school today and pick you up later on. No, bring them to Sunday school. Bring them to worship service. Bring them out to the Lord's house and let them see that you have an interest in the things of the Lord. See, challenge them to high goals in life. I think this is extremely important to challenge our t children so that we we show an interest in what they're doing. If they play piano, encourage them, challenge them to something greater. If they're within this or that of good things, challenge them to achieve higher goals in life. There's nothing wrong in that. D is to delight in their in achievements in school or on the job. Many times it's so important that the children see that you participate. Let's see if, say if they're playing at a basketball game, that you're there to show that you delight in their achievement. Or if they've done good in school, or even if they've done bad at school, that you go and talk with the teacher, and you go there when they have open class for the parents to come and converse and talk with the teachers, or on the job, delight in their achievement. E is to exalt the Lord in their presence at every opportunity. How important that is. To exalt the Lord, the name of Jesus, in a right, honorable way. And that they see and know that we make use of the opportunities that God has given us to share with them. F is to frown on evil. That they don't see or that they don't uh, notice that we uh, enjoy evil things, hope and pray you don't. As a believer, we should take a stand against evil things. Frown on it. Turn your back to it. That's what the Bible says. And they see our life. You can't fool your children. Oh, no. They see. So don't live a double standard. Frown on evil. Live up 
to what you share with them as well. And may the Lord be number one in your life. G, give them love. Don't hold back. Allow them to know and hear from you that you love them, that you care about them, that you, they are important in your life. They are a gift from God to you, your children. H, hear their problems. Lend an ear to what they have to say. Many times it's a hard thing to do for parents. We're busy. We have a lot to do. But hear their problems. So they know that you're concerned about them. So they know that you care about them. Just think of how many children today, they go with a chain around their neck for the, the, uh, with a, a key on it where the parents are here and there and it seems like their parents don't even care. No, listen to your children's problems. I ignore not their childish fears. You know, the children, they have fears at times. It wasn't many days ago. One of my boys came running up at night, and he had gone to bed. We had tucked him in and prayed with him, and he came running up, and, and I, I'm afraid, he said. I had a dream, and it wasn't good. Well, he slept there with us a little bit, and I carried him down. And In other words, don't ignore their childish fears. Show your concern for them. Their problems are very small, are they not? But be concerned for them, even though their problems are small. Don't just push it aside. J, joyfully accept their apologies. You know, this is important too. They're going to make mistakes. All of us do. Don't expect your children to act like grown-ups because they aren't. Accept their apologies. Teach them. Train them in the way they should go, the Bible says. And joyfully do it. Say, son or daughter, I care. I accept your apology. K, keep their confidence so they can trust in you and they can be confident and that you can keep a secret and you can be a close friend in that way with your own children and those in your family L live a good example before them at all times as I mentioned before don't have double standards live a good example let them see that you care about the things of the Lord. Let them see that you're concerned for the welfare of the family. Let them see that you, you set a good example on the job, at home, at church, at school, at play, wherever it may be, that you set a good example before them at all times, day and night. And make them your best friends. Shouldn't it be that way? That your own family, that your own children are really your best friends? You share things of intimate values with them. Make them your best friends. Take time with your family. Don't ignore them. That brings me to the next thought. Never ignore their endless questions. I remember when I was a boy, I could ask all kinds of questions, and so could my children. You know, don't ignore them. Don't just push them aside and say, come back later on. Now, I'm speaking to myself when I'm sharing these things with you because we, I need help in this way. We all need help here. Encourage one another along these lines. Never ignore their endless questions. Take a little time and say, okay, let's take a few moments and talk about these things and and then I've got to run on and do something like this, whatever it might be. But just don't ignore them. Take some time and share as they throw out the many endless questions they might have. O, -o is to open your home to their friends. Get to know their friends. Open your home to their friends. You know, there's there are many homes today that are they don't even want children in there. They don't want the neighbor, neighbors to come with their children and, and play inside. They can only play outside. It shouldn't be that way. Open your home. 
Let your home be open to friends and to visitors. Practice that type of, a, of an open home. It, it's rewarding to do so. T is to pray for them by name daily. I, I think I try to practice this in my own life, is to pray for my children. When we have devotions, before they go to school in the morning, I pray for them by name and pray for others by name. It's so important that we pray for people before the throne of God, even by name, as well as our own family. Q is to quicken your interest in their spirituality, that we're sensitive to their little lives that are <clears throat> being shaped and formed and show an interest in their spiritual well-being. R, remember their needs. They've got needs just like you have. They need to be comforted. They need to be encouraged. All right? Remember their needs. And try and feed that hunger and that longing and that need they have within their own heart and within their own life as well. Remember those needs. S, show them the way of salvation. I think the parents are the greatest ones in those forming young years that can show children the way of salvation. Make it plain to them. Simple. Don't try and make it difficult. Because it, it is simple. Always relate to the fact they must deal with their own sin. And confess it in before the Lord. If we do so, he is faithful and just to forgive us. And to cleanse. All, also, T, teach them to work. And be responsible men and women. That's an important thing. We try to give our children chores at home. Uh, the one boy has to take and clean up the garbage cans throughout the house. The girls, they have to vacuum. And they, they have to uh, clean the piano and dust the uh, clock and uh, dust the tables and different things like that. We teach them responsibilities. If it doesn't start at home, when is it going to start? They've got to learn to fix their own bed. Good habits. Good habits. Teach them these things. You understand they are still young. Again, don't think that they're grown up. They're not supposed to act like grown ups. Sure, you're trying to teach them, but understand that they're still young. V, verify your statements. In other words, prove to them that you're speaking the truth. Verify your statements so that they can try you out and test you out. Wean them, W now, wean them from bad company. The Bible does say that bad company ruins good morals, so wean them away from bad company. X, it would go like this, expect them to obey. And that starts at a young age. If you don't train up a child at a young age, how can you expect them later on to obey? It starts at a young age that you treat and teach them that. Why is yearn for God's best for them? Z, zealously guide them in biblical truths. If we could practice some of these principles, it would sure help our children and be a blessing to them. The Lord bless you as you share with them along these lines, in Jesus' name, we would encourage you to do so. Amen. Oh, will you give heed to this message today? Unto your convictions be true. There's danger and death in a further delay my friend he is now calling you make room for the savior today make room for the savior today if you Seek mansions in hell.